Hi everybody, welcome to Walking and Talking with Phoenix and today we're talking about what makes man worthy, what makes man significant and how does he define progress and evolution. You have a look at all of this, a lot of very tall buildings, probably says something right in terms of a bit of overcompensation, a bit of short man syndrome, you know what I'm saying? But this isn't the point today. The point is there's a lot of tall buildings. There's a lot of buildings across the globe. They just keep getting taller as if they're trying to reach heaven itself. Story of Babylon, if I've ever heard it. Man seems to determine the value of himself and his role within the whole based on how tall he can build things, whether it be a building, whether it be you know, a church and its steeple, or whether it be his bank account or his assets, the amount of properties he owns, you know, cars he has in the garages, all these things. A man prides himself and everybody, you know, measures each other's worth based on how much they can accumulate and all the nice pretty things that they can gain. It doesn't really matter so much though it seems, how people go about procuring these things. I mean, I live in Australia, Western Australia over here, they call it the mining state. So many people living in the back pocket of Gina Reinhardt, so many FIFO, fly in, fly out people, that, you know, if somebody says, hey, what do you do for a living? And you tell them, oh yeah, I do fly in, fly out, I work, I work in the mines, you know, I, I, I pump blood from the earth and sell it to big corporations and fat pigs so they can get richer and richer and fatter and fatter. People won't go, oh, that's, that's horrible, that's, that, that's lacking virtue a little bit, isn't it? I mean, sure, I must pay you okay, but, you know, is it really contributing to a good cause? They don't go like that. No way! That would be the day. That would be the day that people like, start responding like that. It's actually very different. People will give you a pat on the back pay your respect because you're because you got a job for one doesn't really matter what the job is you got a job you could be bombing helpless people in shelters via remote controlled drones and people will respect you just because you got a job right doesn't matter what you're doing and even if it's mining or killing people or contributing to obesity or any other, any other pandemics, which are eating up the world and the humanity and all other creatures on it, doesn't matter. You will gain more respect, regardless of what you're doing and why, just for the fact that you're working. Just for the fact that you're working. A lot more than somebody, you know, who doesn't work, let's say, or maybe someone who doesn't work but doesn't really earn too much. You've got a bit of a low-end job. Maybe they're an artist or they're busking or trying to make a living out of their art and their music. Maybe they're just a waiter like myself, you know, not a lawyer, not a miner, not a doctor, not some tycoon I'm working on some ladder t towards prestige and massive fortune. And these people, they won't gain as much respect. They will never receive the recognition because, like I said, we don't judge a person's worth based on what they do and why. We just base a person's worth on what they gain as, as a result, how much money they make, and not where they're going and why they're going, but what they're getting along the way and what they're building up and how tall all these things are, how big their lists are of various accomplishments. And it really is quite concerning to me when we start judging people's values and their significance and their roles within the whole based on aesthetics and their aptitude for committing sin, essentially. I'm not sin in a religious context, I mean, generally the highest paying jobs are the ones that are the most immoral, right? Ones where you've got to be either exploiting people or sapping the earth's resources, polluting, killing, these pay the most. Any other job, you know, that is working towards helping people, like the human resources, 
field, people that are actually trying to help society, they don't get as much funding, they never will. They don't get paid nearly as much. They nowhere near accomplish as much as those other people, nor do they yet succeed as much, apparently. And that's, that's concerning, that it's about the aesthetics and the sin. It's about your aptitude for sin and how much wrongdoings you are happily obliged to partake in to facilitate, whether consciously or ignorantly. And the more you can do, the more fucked up things you can do without a second thought, the more you're patted on the back, the more you're congratulated, the more you're inv involved with and invited to meetings with gold watch wearing members very high up, in higher places. And what does this have to say about our future? What does this have to say about where we are going? When we have traded in virtue and what is real, when we have traded in virtue and function for sin and aesthetics, where it doesn't really matter about what you're doing and why the function, it doesn't really matter about virtues, that's the why, Seems I've reached a dead end, my little stroll. Haven't we all? What matters most of all is what do you have? It doesn't matter why you have it. And it's the same point I'm drilling right now. It's the central point when we start to gauge people's worth, not all based on their virtue and not based on how they function, but just on what they gain as a result of committing all these atrocities and looking good along the way. It's all about image and ego, right? Then we individually and collectively can justify, advocate, and support, even facilitate, and we do, uh, downward spirals of all kinds and all degrees. We can justify, facilitate, advocate, and support sin rape, murder, pillaging, exploitation in many forms and we do. There's not really any conclusion I can make with this one. Wherever we're heading, we're heading. And I don't see a clear destination at the end of it. Once I can say this is where we've headed it doesn't look clear, it looks very messy, it looks very chaotic. I see a world of selfish animals doing whatever, whatever they can to gain recognition for being invirtuous but capable and tricky. Doing whatever they can and getting away with everything they do because nobody is even looking for virtue or people doing anything wrong in the first place. Everybody's just looking to get ahead in this race, this rat race, this pig race, anything but doves, anything but, you know, an animal which is pure and respectable. They call it a rat race for a reason, because you have to be a rat to excel. Dog eat dog well, the more you can bark, the more you can bite, whether it's right to do so, that doesn't matter. It's about playing the game. It doesn't matter about the true cost to the world, to the people, to the atmosphere, to all creatures, it's not even part of the equation. How much longer can we live like this? And how much longer before you realize, all of you, When we've reached our highest point in evolution and we have achieved a capstone on our funeral, on our gravestone, and it's gonna say, humankind, greatest accomplishment, greatest feat at the peak of its evolution, suicide, and the murder of everything. How are you gonna feel then? <laughs>